What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Habib reacts to Islam Makachev being number one pound for pound. With Islam Makachev's win over Alexander Volkanovsky, he now finds himself in sole possession of the title of pound for pound kingpin. The move knocked off John Jones, who had retaken his place as the UFC's pound for pound king earlier this year and indicated to fans that the Makachev era may not be ending anytime soon. In a post on Instagram, Nurmagomedov reacted to Makachev's new spot atop the pound for pound list, writing in Russian, it's an unprecedented case when two fighters raised from childhood by the same coach in the same city, in the same gym, trained side by side for a long time, become single weight champions in the best league in the world, the UFC, and also both became the best fighters regardless of the weight category of their time. And believe me, it's not a full stop. Islam Makachev continues to make history. Despite a flawless victory, Makachev won't return to action until March at the earliest according to his team. When he returns, the expectation is that he will fight Charles Oliveira. However, nothing has been set in stone. Next up, let's take a look at Chael Sonnen and Jorge Masvidal go back and forth. Ariel Helwani and Chael Sonnen's recent spat carried over to another episode of the MMA Hour this week, where former title challenger Jorge Masvidal was a guest. Masvidal weighed in on the debate, stating that he believed Helwani won. Rather than stopping there, however, Masvidal took aim at Sonnen's past failed drug tests for performance-enhancing drugs. I mean, he knows it himself. Oh, That's no. the dirtiest fighter they've ever lived. He got popped with like nine substances, oh, still God. couldn't no, win the title. Now, you know what that guy swore. That comment infuriated Sonnen, who took aim at Masvidal in over a dozen posts on social media, ripping the former BMF for everything from his man bun to his recent legal case. In one tweet, Sonnen wrote, George, can you travel out of state without air marshals shackling you to a hand dolly like Hannibal Lecter? In another pair of tweets, he wrote, Are you allowed to kick with the leg that's wearing the house arrest ankle monitor? Before adding, Masvidal, I do want some, just trying to be clear on a few regulatory matters. Is your corner going to give you a prison juice box instead of water? In conclusion, Sonnen wrote, Lastly, a word of advice. Don't be two-faced. It means the next time you fight, you're going to have four black guys instead of the usual two. Masvidal, unsurprisingly, wasn't having any of it, responding simply by writing, You juice head. I bet you won't say this stuff in person. Chill, Sonnen. Just keep the same energy when you see me. Masvidal could notably be making a return to combat sports in the new year, however. Given the size difference, it seems as though a sanctioned bout between the two is likely off the table, regardless of the rule set. Next up, let's take a look at Dracus Duplessis sends message to Israel Adesanya. UFC CEO Dana White broke some major news this week when he revealed the UFC 297, UFC 298, and UFC 299 main events, which included a middleweight title fight between Sean Strickland and Dracus Duplessis. After the news circulated, fans were quick to circle back around to comments CK KB's Eugene Behrman had previously made about Duplessis, where he alleged that the middleweight contender would now go to the back of the queue. Duplessis himself then responded, simply writing, What can I say? A fumble has never looked this good. With Duplessis set to compete for the title, we could be in for a situation where Duplessis is now defending the belt against Israel Adesanya, depending on how things play out. Despite the former champ stating he would take some time off, his longtime rival Alex Pajeda believes he'll be back in action sooner than expected. During a recent episode of MMA Fighting's Portuguese-speaking Trocasal Franca podcast, the Glory Hall of Famer spoke about Adesanya's reported hiatus, stating, I don't think that's true. He won't stay out that long, and that's not good for him, to not fight for that long. He'll give other interviews soon and get motivated again. I think he needs a bit more motivation. If he finds something that motivates him, I think he comes back quickly. When he finds that motivation, he comes back sooner than that. If Adesanya decides to return in 2024, there are quite a few intriguing matchups to be made against fresh opponents. Despite the last style bender nearly clearing out the division, there's the rematch with Sean Strickland on the table, as well as the clash with Duplessis. In addition, a bout with Hamza Chimaev would certainly generate plenty of hype on a pay-per-view card. Now, let's shift gears and take a look at UFC updates. Heading into UFC 295 this weekend, there have been some big UFC updates. Without further ado, let's jump right in, starting with a change to Saturday's card. With Narulo Aliyev out of his scheduled fight with Matush Rebeki, Roosevelt Roberts will now step in on short notice after a March loss to Austin Hubbard. Although fight week is already underway, Roberts is eager to put his recent loss behind him with a short notice victory. Early next month, the UFC Fight Night Shanghai card will mark the promotion's highly anticipated return to China. After much speculation, news has now surfaced that Song Yadong will clash with Chris Gutierrez in the main event. The bout will see Song Yadong look to build on an April win over Ricky Simone, while Gutierrez looks to build on a recent win over Alatang Haley back in October. In addition, the automated UFC roster tracker indicated that former title challenger Tyler Santos has parted ways with the promotion this week, leaving fans stunned. 
So far, no word has surfaced regarding what prompted the split. However, her removal from the roster wasn't the only notable one. According to reports, Myra Bueno Silva, who is set to fight for the vacant bantamweight title in January, was also removed from the roster. While the post caused considerable confusion, with theories flying that she could have failed another test, it appears that her removal from the roster is due to a pre-existing suspension for ADHD medication that will expire on November 29th. As she stated in a social media video amid the confusion, Hi guys, uh, this new about me uh, being cut is don't worry, okay? From the sounds of things, the bout is expected to go on as planned. Next, let's take a look at Joe Rogan and Chael Sonnen return to UFC 95. With this weekend's UFC 295 card set to take place in the United States, fans will once again have the chance to hear longtime commentator Joe Rogan return to the broadcasting booth. Rogan's schedule, of course, no longer includes pay-per-view events internationally. However, he has been confirmed for this weekend's card. In addition, Chael Sonnen will be back behind the ESPN desk where he, Anthony Smith, and boxing expert Teddy Atlas will be handling desk duties. Sonnen, of course, notably returned to action earlier this year after wrapping up a legal matter that had kept him on the sidelines. While the event was expected to host a highly anticipated heavyweight title bout between Jon Jones and Stipe Miocic, it sounds as though all systems are a go for a stacked card in New York, barring any last-minute weigh-in mishaps. Next, let's take a look at Dustin Poirier breaks silence on Islam Makachev fight. Prior to Alexander Volkanovsky stepping in on short notice to fight Islam Makachev in the UFC 294 main event, the promotion reportedly inquired about Dustin Poirier's weight just in case they needed him to step in. Although Poirier was fresh off a loss to Justin Gagey, Hunter Campbell reportedly reached out to him, leading him to believe that he could be stepping in on short notice to fight for the lightweight title. Speaking to MMA Fighting, Poirier recalled the situation. So I get back to my condo, I'm unpacking my bags and my phone rings, I see it's Hunter. And uh, you know, I'm all jacked up on Celsius, dude. I answer the phone, let's go. I said, what a perfect timing. This is how life works. You know, I just landed in Florida. My whole team is here. My coaches are in town. This happened for a reason. He asked me my weight and I can make the weight in 11 days, no problem. And I thought that was it. That's why I, the next day, he told me give him one day. As the Diamond explained, he followed up with Campbell the next day. However, despite the fact that he accepted, the UFC had already learned that Volkanovski would step in. With the short notice fight falling through, Poirier is looking ahead to the future. Speaking with MMA Mania this week, Poirier admitted that he's simply waiting for the right opportunity to come his way. I don't really have a whole lot of plans. I'm just kind of sitting back, training, trying to remain a student. And when the phone rings with the right name, I'll know it's the one. And, uh... We'll take it from there. With 2024 right around the corner, it'll be interesting to see when we see the diamond return to action. Next, let's take a look at Aljamain Sterling breaks silence on John Jones' relationship. Many MMA fans may not be aware of the fact that many years ago, John Jones and Aljamain Sterling were friends. As the story goes, Sterling messaged Jones on MySpace back in the day, sparking a friendship between the two young New York wrestlers. Since then, however, the pair have grown apart. Although Sterling didn't go into details, he seemed to indicate on his YouTube channel that his fight breakdowns contributed to the situation, given that he has to remain unbiased. For example, on one occasion, Sterling stated that Jones would quote, get his ass boxed off by Stipe Miocic. In a recent video for his YouTube channel, he spoke about their friendship. Uh, John was just really cool. And I don't know what happened along the way. I think something happened, whatever. That's a whole nother conversation. We're not as cool as we once we once were, but that's natural. Obviously he would train somewhere else. I train somewhere else. I break down fights. I can't be biased. So it's not like I'm gonna be sitting there just saying John was gonna be, be, beat everyone just because so far, Jones has yet to weigh in on the situation. However, it'll be interesting to see if the heavyweight champ addresses Sterling's comments publicly. Alex Pajeda pranked Daniel Cormier with a golf club, pretending to swing it behind his head. Here's the clip. He's trying to get the to swing the golf club. He good, he good. What's he doing, what's he doing? Confia, confia, confia. No, confia, but don't look forward, look forward, look forward. Hold on, say like that. Oh, dude, what did you do? Alex Pajeda wants to see Dylan Dennis in the UFC. At the UFC 295 press conference, Alex opened up about Dylan. Here's what he had to say. Do you think the UFC should sign him because he seems pretty adamant that he wants to be in the UFC. No, I trained him. I did, we did two nice sessions, one before the Blahovich fight, which was a MMA training, and another one for for this fight that he was having with, with Logan, you know, first 
we we did the MMA session. Like you see, he's a very talented kid. We had two nice sessions. He's a great guy, and uh, the fact that he's actually in negotiations with the UFC or trying to get in, I think it's awesome, and I'm very pumped for you. I, I root for him. The MMA community goes off on Dana White after he promised the winner of Hamzat versus Kamaru a title shot and instead gave it to Drakus Duplessis. Uh, I believe it's been reported that the winner of Kamaru and Hamzat will take on Sean Strickland. Is that true? Um, and is there a super card brewing here with Sugar Sean, Sean Strickland, first defenses on the same card, maybe with McGregor in December? Yes, that is an absolute fact. The fact that these guys are taking this fight short notice, they will get the next shot at the title. Here's what the community had to say. What's going on with Hamzat and UFC? Super annoying. Do we have to wait another one and a half years for the next fight? What happened to Chimaev? I thought he gets a title shot against Strickland. Hamzat should have got it. They robbed him. Remember when Dana said winner of Usman Chimaev was guaranteed a title shot? Someone replied with, this is why the UFC needs some kind of system. Not saying like the PFL, although it is much more straightforward, the UFC is way too disorganized to be the premier fighting league in the world. I thought Dana White was a man of his words, but it turns out to be the complete opposite. He was supposed to fight Hamzat, as per Dana White, before the UFC 294. Where is Hamzat versus Sean? Dana lied to us. Top comments. Connor accusing someone of PED abuse is like Connor accusing someone of being a drunk. Someone responded with, he's not competed on steroids though, has he? Connor McGregor wanting to fight everyone but not wanting to fight anyone. Connor going off on someone about steroids after the past few years he's had is wild. Make sure to leave a comment and you might get featured in our next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss any MMA news. Check out our video from yesterday if you missed it. See you tomorrow.